now till 3 p.m. Proudly sponsored by Patriot Saw, talking all the biggest stories from the world of sports. And certainly this week, there's been quite a lot to talk about. First up, Nigeria are in the AFCON final alongside host nation Cote d'Ivoire. They lock horns on Sunday. When Ghana won its fourth title in 1982, Nigeria only had one. On Sunday, they have the chance to equal the Black Stars record. When Ghana won the fourth title in 1982, Cote d'Ivoire had none. They've since won two and have a chance to go within one of the Black Stars since then. Conversely, well, the Black Stars of Ghana, we are back on licking our wounds. The GFA held a meet the press uh, on, uh, in Kumasi uh, over the week or uh, within this week. I'm not sure what the highlights are really there. The only thing I picked up from it is that they have lent their lessons. What lessons have they lent? I have no idea. Uh, maybe my guesting here will try and tell me. Did they give any indication from that meet the press that these guys know exactly what they're doing and that they've turned over a new leaf and they're they've accepted our state and are ready to take us to the next level because that's what we need to know um certainly there has to be an acceptance and they say they are ready to take new ideas and listen to the press and listen to the people do you think they're listening to you now yeah, they engage in blocking journalists Official accounts are engaged in blocking journalists who have dissenting views. How do you, how do you listen to people that you don't want to hear from? How do you block someone and then go around and say you're ready to listen to them? It's a very, it's a very complicated situation. The general secretary said that was a mistake. He said they blocked Sadiq Adams by mistake. Okay, we'll see. But anyway, we will pick the nuggets from that press conference. Uh, see if there's any indication of uh, how they plan to move our football forward. Also, uh, of course, we'll talk about that AFCON final. Talk about how uh, both teams made it there and who stands a better chance of qualifying uh, to or uh, winning that trophy on Sunday. Daniel Cranting is in Abidjan, so he'll be joining us with insights from there. Gary R. Smith is also in Abidjan. Uh, he will be joining us as well from there with insights. Uh, so that's a lot of boots on the ground for Joy Sports as far as this AFCON is concerned. Also on Monday, the greatest drama of our political scene happened when Peter Chumessi showed up before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. And uh, it was quite, quite dramatic, the things that happened there. So we'll see if uh, we can highlight some of the things there and what they mean for our sports going forward, especially what it means for our infrastructure. Now, the Africa Games is in exactly 28 days. Joy Sports has started our Africa Games series. If you follow that, we brought you reports from the Legon Sports Stadium, which will host the Athletics. We've brought you reports from Bo Teman. We've brought you reports from the Accra Sports Stadium. Lots of you were not impressed. In fact, you were absolutely disgusted uh, about what you saw there. Uh, since then, work has resumed and they're trying to put things in place to get ready for the Africa Games. What about Team Ghana's preparation? We sent a reporter to Cape Coast uh, where the minister went to assure them uh, of their support. There was supposed to be facility testing on February 8th. This was Thursday. Uh, the local organizing committee was forced to postpone that because the facilities are simply not ready. Not even for the testing. 28 days to the competition. And now they've moved the testing to February 12th. Hopefully that happens. Um, and February 12th, obviously, is uh, in three days' time. It's in three days' time. That's on Monday. So hopefully that happens. Hopefully that happens. There are issues regarding... The organization, transport. How do you intend to transport people between the Gomes village in Legon and Botteman? The competition areas are all over the place. They're all over the place. Cape Coast will host football matches. The Cape Coast Paul Stadium pitch, you've seen it. Not great. The Teodosa Hockey pitch will host hockey. 
Alisa Hotel will host chess. Bama Camp will host squash. It's all over the place. Legon Stadium will host athletics. Botemam will host 10 sporting disciplines. So the Africa Games conversation has to be had. And that's why here at Joy Sports, we will bring you a very special show just to put all the issues of Africa Games at one place. I can report. By the way, Situ is here. Hi, Situ. How are you? <laughs> By the way, Al beat us 2 0 yesterday. You and who? In the. You and Riyad, who? Riyad Cup. You and who? Anase. I'm a fan of Anase, but they beat us. Did you see the video of Ronaldo saying that I'm here, not Messi? Yes, he's here, not Messi. Why is, my, why is he so obsessed with Messi? Why are the fans screaming Messi, Messi when he's playing? Ah, that's the way of getting under his skin. And I absolutely love that. And he's telling them, he also loves, he's telling them that he's the one there, not Messi. So they should go to MLS and watch Messi in Inter Miami finishing last in the... In yeah, the, in but the they country. saw him and started chanting Messi. It's when, not like we don't know that he's there. When Messi was in China, the Chinese were booing him when he came onto the pitch. But he didn't say, I'm here, not Ronaldo, did he? But he can't speak English. So he, he can't he, say that in Spanish. He can't say that. He, 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 he said it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in China. Why does he need English? What? He's in China. So, he doesn't but, need English. But Ronaldo was in Saudi. Why did he say it in English? It's the language he understands. So Ronaldo, could, Messi could so have said it maybe he said in Spanish. Spanish. But you, you, you can't read. You can't. You can't read lip yeah, Spanish. Uh, <laughs> but there's a Messi video where he's telling the fans, "Hey, uh, Bobo, hey, Bobo, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, is another player, another player. Vegas, Vegas. To be fair, Messi says he understands the English, he just doesn't yeah. like speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's hard to speak it. And I like I like, I like that. He's consistently stuck to his language. Yeah, of course. He's not trying to it's not, speak. it's not by horse. He's a big man. He's above language. He's a, in fact if so he doesn't English, need the language to be need, marketed, he's, right? He's above it. Yes. If I, all the others who are speaking the English need to then translate to spanish to hear messi speak he doesn't need to speak english for, english for them to hear him yes. he's above it yeah. that is how supreme he is brilliant guy top guy supremely good and to be fair in terms of global nature spanish is one of the i think it's probably like the second or maybe the third probably could be third. most widely spoken yeah not with the most speakers so people confuse those two things yeah. okay yeah uh, the most widely spoken language is english yeah. But the language with the most speakers is Mandarin. Mm. Mm. Because of Do you get the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the difference. You, you get the difference? Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you can have a language being spoken by many people, but all these people are concentrated in there one you space. Go. There you but go. But English is spread across and there everybody across the globe is speaking there, it. There you go. So, so yeah. the most widely spoken language in the world is English. Mm. But the language with the most speakers, speakers. is Mandarin. Whoa. Whoa. It's Mandarin. China. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. billions of people. It's, where does Arabic rank there? Arabic, most it, it, widely spoken. No, no, uh, not widely spoken, but uh, with most, most speakers. speakers. Go and look I at, think Arabic is like, it's probably like the number four. Go and look at a, a big chunk of, you know, the Gulf coming into nothing. Are you talking most speakers? Africa. So most speakers most definitely speakers. would be Mandarin, followed Mandarin. by English. English. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the sport. Maybe French. Maybe French. Maybe French. I maybe think you maybe could have Spanish. Arabic. Sp because yeah, the maybe whole then. of South America, if you take out Brazil, yeah. everyone else speaks Spanish. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Spain itself. Spain itself. And the whole of Latin America. Latin America, yeah. So I'm talking like Costa Rica, Rica um, Puerto, Rico. Puerto Rico. like yeah. Even though they don't Cuba. have Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, Spanish. Exactly. Yeah. All of them are also yeah. Spanish. Yeah. Um, and some so African countries speak Spanish. So. One. One Equatorial, Equatorial Guinea. Guinea yeah. Yes, they are the only African country that, that speaks speak Spanish. Spanish. Right. My linguistics lecture will be very proud of me. Nothing so that I, I still so. remember. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, uh, this is not a language class. Um, it's it's sports. And uh, Muftar Nabil Abdullah is here with me as well see in you. studio. Muftar, how yeah, are you? Yes, you. Yes, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, uh, very well. Very well. Um, well, uh, here's the thing. I, I found uh, a, uh, a uh, most spoken language. Yeah, and this one actually says English has overtaken Mandarin in widely in, to in total number of speakers. Okay, the Mandarin is second. Yes, 
So total number of speakers, which would make sense. That total English, number of speakers that's is English, different from... Yeah, no, that's the thing. Yeah, total number of speakers, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Like, that's why I said earlier, yeah. I said Mandarin was number one. Yeah. But I'm looking here now and it says English and I'm saying it would make sense because the English speakers will only ever keep growing. And, and, and that's also and because... And the Mandarin speakers aren't growing. And no, and the Mandarin speakers are now speaking a lot of the English. There you go. Because they started exporting themselves there a lot you go. more. And there a lot you of go. them so are, it would make have sense. diluted here. So. This one says they have 1.4 billion speakers English. Right. 1.4 4 billion total mm. speakers. Uh, Mandarin is still second with 1.1 uh, that's incredibly billion. close. <laughs> that's incredibly close. And if, if I'm thinking it's right, and a lot of those from China are speaking English, so maybe it's adding to the English. I mean, that's still wild. Ooh, number three is interesting. This will make sense, actually. Well, Hindi. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. India, yes. Well, right? yeah, how can we do processing? Yeah, because, know, yeah, right? yeah. India, really. But to be fair, India is like Africa and not only in a India. sense. It's not, India is like Africa in a sense, in that it's not just Hindi that yeah. they speak there. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, the people there are those in that's uh, from Kerala uh, they, they the language is not Hindi they okay. speak something else Kerala they, they speak Kerala that's mm. what they call it mm. uh, and they many as well but here this one says Hindi has 602 million total speakers right both of like that's like half the number, number of, of English speakers yeah and then Spanish is number four yeah with five five nine there's Where does French rank? Standard Arabic is two seven four. Yeah, I knew Arabic should be up there. Yeah. Arabic when you look at the number of Arabic should have, should be up there, really. Yeah. And then you have French at number six. Okay. Uh, at two seven four. Please, number seven, yeah. Oh, wait, please, 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 please. <laughs> no, number seven is Bengali, which is also spoken in India. India. Okay. And that's two seven three million right. uh, speakers. Then there's Russian. Russian would make mm. sense because the Soviet Union it was huge and still yeah. speak Russia across all of them. Parts of Ukraine speak yeah. Russia, so, Russia. So, it's so, so how many people speak Mampruli or uh, or Wala or uh, or Sisala? <laughs> now I, you can you have to go and count with your hand. <laughs> 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 but I can't. Uh, but but, no, but, 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 but it's know, there because you know, we just did a we just did a, a census, right? Mm. Yeah. So you can yeah. find it. Yeah. But yeah, ever, you, you ever speakers to, uh, would be plenty. Ever speakers because in Ghana, mm -hmm. the whole of Togo, a big part of Benin. You just said in okay, okay, you said in Ghana, in Ghana comma, the, uh, the whole of Togo. You see, punctuation is important. Yes, the way you said in Ghana, the whole of Togo. No, I said in Ghana, <laughs> in Ghana, <laughs> comma. No, I'm not so the way I, I, so I landed. So the, no, the, the way I landed, you didn't hear me. The voice, no, yes, Ghana, the voice needed to drop. In I dropped Ghana? it in so that's Ghana. Thing. I, didn't that's the the, comma. I didn't hear the comma. Ah, pause. okay, in Ghana, yes. So now the whole I, have of Togo? I have to mentally put the comma. There. Great, so okay. in Ghana, <laughs> thank you. The whole of Togo, thank yes. you. The whole of Benin, okay. The whole, yeah, no, the and whole the, of Benin, yeah, ever. No, but not across. the whole of Benin. Part no, not, of not, Benin. Not, not to say everybody speaks it. Yeah, like yeah. in Togo, not everybody, but yeah, exactly. it's, it's a. It's so, a so the whole okay. of is wrong. Part okay, so of. A, a big part of Benin. Okay. Big part. A big part of Benin. Part of Benin. Okay, part of Benin. Thank you. And part a, of. A part of Togo. And 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 the, there are some parts of Nigeria. Oh, okay. That's that's. So that's very wide. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Wow. Yeah. 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 No, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. That's it's actually a good number. Yeah. Yeah. Can you any can you put a number on how many languages you think exist in Africa? Oh come on, no, I cannot do that. You know <laughs> how many languages languages are in Ghana? In Ghana, over fifty something languages? Yeah. Fifty four, fifty fifty four languages? I think so. When I so. when I when I was in primary school it was forty nine. Well we've discovered some more, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You see the when thing you is, were in primary school. Yes. Which year was this? Oh I'm talking like you ninety don't care. So. But you, you see, see my linguistics class taught me that uh, languages are dying. So I would be, I'm oh, quite yeah, surprised. I'm quite surprised that uh, somehow we seem to have more languages in Ghana now. And uh, some mm. of it might actually be maybe a bit of Creole, like a mixture of two languages. Yeah. You know, adds intermarriages and all those things happen. You know, and, and we merge. I thought, or maybe people are adding pigeon. Um, yeah, Pidgin is a uh, yeah, it's yeah. just like a it's a lingua franca kind of. It's a stopgap language. Yeah, it's, it's an amalgam amalgamation of languages. Yeah. Yeah. There are three thousand languages in Africa alone. Three thousand. Gary Al Smith, which of them do you speak, or how many of them do you speak? Gallantry, <laughs> then English. <laughs> <laughs> 
the pigeon or the creole okay. which one uh, and then, no no how many of the three thousand african languages do you speak um that should be approximately four <laughs> How do you approximate languages, my brother? It's a definite <laughs> number. You understand or you don't understand. Exactly, exactly. But but the, I, 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 like the, I like the discussion, even though it's not a linguistics program. But, and I would actually say that, do you know how many languages are in the Volta region alone to begin with? That is a wild question. Uh, if yeah. I'm going to put yeah, a guess a, on can it. Can you guess? Volta region, I would say eight. Yeah. So there's the so there's Ebe, right? Okay. Which is but you see there are it's in there that are not exactly Ebe. Yeah. Right. So the do they, do they, the are they is the one here. Hold yeah. on. Are they but then there are a few in there that so when those people speak their sub dialects, um uh, what do I say? How do I put this? The no, I didn't want not the real uh, no, the um uh, what do you call the the, the Main ever people, right? You know what I'm saying. The normal ever people don't understand, but those people understand ever. So it's like people down base who understand that, but we gun people, real gun people, like we don't understand down You know that sort ah, of thing. Okay. So yeah, where John Dumelu comes from, right, is the Lipe traditional area, and in the Lipe traditional, distinct dialects there. Very distinct. But if you are ever like situ, you won't understand. If they speak, you will understand. But they get every ever. You understand. So yeah. um one of them is called Sekpele. Say it after me. Sekpele. 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 <laughs> Sekpele. And it's Sekpele. called it's Sekpele. called and that's where that's what you so if you speak that to John Dubele, you will understand. This that's the language of the Lipi people. Mm. So it's it's very interesting what this discussion we are having because in some of the areas, so like I mean I'm in mean Cote d'Ivoire now, I'm in Abidjan now, I am understand that I mean you know the um the bulk of the Izima are in Cote d'Ivoire, right? And then the minor but even within the Izima, I learned only yesterday, only yesterday, that there are a few sub dialects in the Izima language as well. So it's all rather interesting and yeah. And um, I think that as Africans, what we have not done, what we have not done, and I came to this conclusion yesterday when I was watching Vladimir Putin's interview, and I'm sure you've seen it on social media. Look, we, what we have not done, as with many, many of our things, not just language, is we have not documented our languages. And so I saw a study by the UN, um, one of these, one, not UNFP, one of these, uh, not UNICEF as well, one of these UN agencies about how African languages die faster on the average than European languages and die. Because the Asians and the Europeans at least make an effort. They have whole universities that study the etymology, the, you know, all those things about the languages and at least try and document them. While we in Africa rely on passing it on from generation to generation, mother to, you know, her children, father to their children. And so if one patriarch or matriarch dies in the family, it is possible that he might take an entire or two or three generations worth of language um, um, along with them. And yeah. then you see that um, and those of us who are left behind. So you see it a lot. I mean, I can vouch that Citro, you or ever is not elective ever. Just like me, I'm not an elective guy. I speak me when I enter places like Jamestown and I enter inside Labadi Osu proper, I soon realize. I mean, I can be speaking to a 15 year old and I realize that Charlie, the guy is speaking to me. It, you know, it is a Polish guy. You know, man, because the, when I listen to a Bonu FM, I, f I feel like. I feel like a I feel like a learner. I, I feel like I don't even understand my own language. You know. Yeah. No, let me let me let me rephrase it for you, you know guys. What I mean, guys. Yeah, when you tune into Obonu FM, you feel like an idiot. Charlie, <laughs> 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 it's crazy, man. You know. Yeah. When I watch like, anyway. Obonu TV as well, and yeah. these days, I mean, I have to give it to you. You know, GTV is undergoing a massive transformation. But as a guy, when I and or, or to Obonu, Obonu TV, and I and I watch the programming. There is a very deliberateness about. I don't know what they are doing there, but whatever they are doing is very very nice. You know, like 
it's for for me who has lived in the city and I've not been to I've never lived in a village before. Rather unfortunately, I always tell my mother that it's something she didn't try with. You know, I wish I had lived in a village. So when you guys, I've told you before, friends, when you guys are speaking and we start speaking about village life and Sadiq and Sadiq, I feel like, hey, Charlie, maybe I've missed a lot, pal. You hey, know, hey, because hey, you I can be listening to some of these stations and they are talking about very typically gun things and I have no clue because I grew up in, you know, freaking Roman rage and <laughs> Laboni and things like you that. See. You see, that's like you know, that's like this that's is like people. Are, you see, are this is a see, he's a child of privilege, who is looking down on his privilege. Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! <laughs> Let me just tell you, people. I came across an Zima in Abidjan. He was called Momo. He was called what? Momo. Momo. That was his name. <laughs> <laughs> I guess how I met him. My extension cord had a problem, and um, I couldn't charge because in uh, Abidjan, their sockets are different from the ones we use here. They use yeah, they use the round pins. Yes, they use the round pin. So uh, I was I wanted to to fix the extension cord. So I came across this gentleman who who could speak a bit of English, and I was like, oh yeah, I was speaking the pigeon pigeon French. We're gonna help me. So he, he told me his name was Momo. I said, ah, Momo. If you come to Ghana, I'm supposed to give you money when you mention Momo. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, in fact, he mentioned his second name. That was also something like this. That when he began telling me the story of enzymas and all that, he told me about the variety that exists even in the enzyma language. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Though he was speaking a bit of broken English, I could clearly understand it. In fact, he used his money to fix my extension cord, wow. changed the cable, did everything for me. For free. When I wanted to pay, he said no. I should, I should take it away because he's met a Ghanaian brother. Just, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I, like as for as for Africa, especially West Africa, we are the same people. Who, oh, yeah. oh yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we, oh, are, yes. we are exactly the same. Only people. broken apart by imaginary lines yeah, and uh, different different, exactly. different so-called official languages. You know how, like I tell people all the time, you know how there's this perception that uh, every Northerner speaks English. It's like Northerners speak English there, like. And Nordness. in fact, now they've added I was out to it. Uh, they say, yeah, there's a perception <laughs> yeah. that every Northerner uh, speaks Hausa. Hausa so. or that uh, Northerners like speaking English. I'll tell you what. The reason is this. It is by necessity, not choice. So you see the way the North is. The North is populated by so many languages. And so I could be living in one village and another village that is just like one kilometer away from me. And the two villages would be speaking two different languages. Oh, yeah. mm. It exists. Which is nowhere. Which is... So yeah, how do you no come identity? In, yes, not not similar. This it's is not like difference. this is different languages, not different dialects. People right. confuse yeah. those two. Yeah. They can different be languages. dialects of yeah. the same language, yeah. Yeah. but these are two like different languages. Like Fanti and yes. two different dialects. But, but they understand like each other. Like and Ever. Yes, two a dialect languages. or dialect dialects are mutually intelligible. Yeah. Oh yes. So being that yeah. when fact, one speaks, I felt you, you really studied the English. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> so, linguistics. Yes. Yes. The, the linguistics. The linguistics. So when w it, it, dialects are mutually intelligible, two two languages are not. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. if they are if the if the if 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 two forms of uh, if two speakers can understand each other speaking different kinds of dialects, then it's probably the same language. It, like example I gave. Fantichi yeah, and that's a perfect example. Oh, yeah. exactly. Dialects. Yeah. So they are dialects of the same language. Language, yeah. What I'm talking about in the so, north so, that exists. So, two different languages. Science. Two different languages. Science. Yes. So, so for Can instance, let's say two villages. Yes, Gary. Let's say, let's Gary is speaking. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in in 2019, as part of my work with UNICEF, we went to a village a village in in the upper west i believe it was it's upper we, west we are place is what we are place is what upper west we are from the same area yes yeah, so, uh, so um uh, away from Fusi. so the name of the of the of the village was Bazin. was Bazin. i think i'm pronouncing it correctly yeah now the free verbal thing friend literally one and a half minutes drive away from Bazin was another village completely different language completely different everything 
it was crazy. Yeah. Like, I had never seen anything like that before. And the people of Bazin could not even understand. Um, I, I'll find the name of the place. You know, the people Bazin of the other village, like, which was one and a half minutes from them. One and a half minutes drive away. I'm not even kidding. Yes. So that explains the point <laughs> I was making about why a lot of Northerners speak the English. Because so, the common... Yes. So then we... Yes. And in linguistics, we call it lingua franca. So you have to find a common language. And English just solves that problem. So when we go to Wa and you pick a Trotsky going to Tumu, there are the Gatis inside. There are... Uh, 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 Sisales inside. There are even the Gatsi and Wale are mutually intelligible, but there are maybe Frafres inside. There are Kasim inside. You know, all of you don't understand each other, but you are in that Trotsky. You are all going to drop in one village after the other until you get to the last stop. So the only way you can communicate with each other is English, and, but, but and that's how. Like that's how come a lot of Northerners speaking have had to. It, yeah, you have to learn, even when you haven't gone to school. You have to find a way of learning the English. But Otherwise, the moving around can become very difficult. Of our language. So, for instance, mm -hmm. there are certain words in Sisala when you speak, a Mampusi can understand, a Dagomba can understand. Yeah, those are just like yes. words in. So, so, like maybe the word father, father, will father understand. right? A Kasina will understand. I'll give you a good example. So, like maybe, maybe the word father. If you say the word father is Baba. Baba. If you go or anywhere mba. in the north and you say Baba or a form of or Baba, mba. 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 everybody mba. knows what you mean. Mba. You know, so anyway. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. anyway, enough Back of the home. languages. Enough of the languages. When are we going to, when are we going to start the program? Uh, we have started the program. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so anyway, uh, we've started the program. Gary, thanks for joining us. Um... Uh, uh, Cranston will join us as well, um, but uh, we, 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 so we, we're still waiting on him. Maybe his data is finished somewhere in Abidjan. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Maybe his data is finished. <laughs> uh, you this is Game Plan. Buy a SIM card. Yeah, 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 this is Game Plan on 99.7 Joy FM and on Hits 103.9 FM. We're going to get into the details of our conversation soon. Uh, Professor Chumessi was before the Public Accounts Committee and the things that unraveled there. So when he resembled your eye. Uh, unbelievable. The GFA also had a press conference or well, meet the press in Kumasi. We'll talk about that. There's the AFCON final. And obviously, a little later, I have to remind all of you Robbie of a AFTV. They say we shouldn't say Arsenal Fan TV because Arsenal had issues with till now. They call themselves AFTV. Okay, AFTV Media. Robbie will be joining us at 2 o'clock as well. Have a little bit of a debate uh, prepared for him. All things Arsenal, all things Premier League. And so, uh, do stick around. Do stick around and don't go anywhere. You can send your messages to us, 055 I see some people, lots of people have sent messages about the language conversation. That's very interesting. Uh, 055-11-11997. Uh, do send us a message and all of the things we'll be talking about here on the show. This is 99.7 Joy FM, 103.9 Hits FM. The show is Game Plan. Sitcho for Philip uh is here with me. Muftar Nabila Abdullah as well. Gary L. Smith has joined us on uh, the line from Abidjan. Daniel Cranting is there as well, looking ahead to that AFCON final. We'll be right back. Two delicious chicken pieces, large chips, and free 200 ml coke. This is not just a meal, but KFC Streetwise 2. Wow, that's amazing. KFC Streetwise 2 is perfect for you at a cool 49 Ghana cities. Enjoy a moment with us by sending hi to our WhatsApp number 0551 711 711 and follow the prompt to get yours. KFC is finger licking good. Dive into a new era of news consumption with MyJoyOnline.com, your go-to destination for cutting-edge journalism, giving you the most credible stories from business to politics and from sports to entertainment. MyJoyOnline.com introduces an upgraded news website meticulously designed to empower you with an enriched browsing experience like never before. Experience the future of news browsing with MyJoyOnline.com.
and Joy FM also uh, hits 103.9. The show is game plan. I'm very surprised that lots of you are enjoying that conversation. This message from Danny Autry on Twitter says, uh, Fentio and Sicho are doing sports linguistics. <laughs> they are tired of getting good, Boga. <laughs> they do sports linguistics on game plan. I'm enjoying it, though. Enough of NSC and Kurt, he says. <laughs> Uh, this one also says, guys, the people in the Volta region who are not typical Evers are called Goans. Yeah, My mother bound, comes yeah. from Logbatota and they speak Ekpana. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. You learn every day. You learn every day. Uh, that's wild. And uh, this one says, um, I just say, uh, that, okay, I just say Emmanuel. He says, Messi's inability to speak English is also what set the tone for the language conversation on game plan. The goat effect. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. That's Ronaldo, right. Man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, Barca for Life says, I didn't even know any of this. Very nice topic, he says. That's what you get on game plan, man. Um, we are versatile like that too. People think oh, it's yeah. not very <laughs> Confused man says, Hey, simple question by your man, take enter every land. Why? Quick. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. And somebody wants to know where Chi is placed. Chi there. In Africa, I think Chi will be big, but. Global wise, you see the numbers we are mentioning 200 and something yeah, million. The whole Ghana cry yeah, yeah. is 31 million yeah, people. So, um, not, but, but I'm but sure we can find but, it. But she's sure spoken outside it. Ghana as well, so there's a possibility the numbers would be high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be, yeah it definitely will be. Tree definitely will be very high yeah. up there. It's a, it's a very widely spoken. Well, yeah, it's in Ghana for sure, everywhere. Even in the north, lots of people speak tree, like in the north. It's another lingua franca. You know, and, and that's actually one thing I find quite weird. When one or two people come up here and we travel back to the village, we speak to each other ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Clinton says, Today we beg you, don't discuss Kett and Prof. Trimacy or the sports minister. All these people are belly fillers and not sportsmen. They don't deserve our sports. Interesting. I hope you've got we've got we've gotten your wish. You've gotten your wish. This one says, uh, <laughs> Now that Anike is married, we won't get any sides from Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, Chale. Oh, Chale. <laughs> the last time he was in Morocco. Morocco. He came papa, with... Papa, <laughs> papa, Papa. <laughs> he came out with Papa. Papa, Papa, oh, Papa. God. That is, uh, that is Osofu <laughs> who is sending us that message. He said, last time he was in Morocco or Egypt, he brought a fascinating story. Man is born free, but everywhere man is in chase. <laughs> And um, this one says, Fen, good afternoon. I love the diversion today. Uh, he says, I'm very surprised lots of you are enjoying that language conversation. And it started from Messi. And it started from Sicho trying to dig Messi for not speaking English. <laughs> but he then ended up praising him, uh, of course, for sticking with Spanish, which has always been his first language. Uh, guys, um, there's a very... Um, a very tiring conversation that we've had for a very long time. So I agree with the people when they say they don't really want to waste too much time on it. But I don't know how much any of you followed. So that, and that's on Prof. Strumiacy. So I'm going to put that on the back burner. But I don't know how many, how, how much all of you followed, uh, how much you actually followed that meet the press. Is that uh, that the GFA held with the journalists in Kumasi? They wanted to play a friendly game. It didn't come off. Situ <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you wanted them to play behind closed doors yeah but that's the norm <laughs> behind closed doors <laughs> I actually even train, found it train quite weird that, behind closed doors they that, behind closed um, doors. this is the institution there's nothing wrong right with, with you retracing your steps trying to build relationship with people of when course you, when you realize that you've messed up at some point but I found it quite weird that this Ghana Football Association never found it worthy of apologizing to to journalists when our very own colleague Sadi Adamo was attacked by a security attaché to to the national team in the US when um someone was hit in the Black Stars team hotel when our very own young Ampo Fankra was told to stop rec recording before it gets physical Jan Pofankra of all people, you can tell him it will get physical, that all of a sudden you want to play friendly match with such with the media. I found it quite funny. In any case, if you wanted to play a friendly match with the media, there is Swag. Write to Swag and invite her for a friendly match. But because the press conference is happening in Kumasi, Swag will say, okay, then Swag Ashanti will play the friendly match with you people. They could have done that. 
But because they just feel they can wake up one day and, oh, after the journalist is here, we can always get them. Let's go. When we say we want to play a friendly match with them, they will come out. Mm -hmm. I found that quite disrespectful. If yeah. they really wanted or if they really respected the media, they are in proper structures. And in fact, Kurt is work member. Prosper is work member. Randy. Uh, oh Henry. God. Henry. Achi. Achi. I found it quite unfortunate that these people who are part of the Inky fraternity never for once found it worthy of appreciating the media and trying to build a relationship with the it's media. It's a very it's a very weird thing, situation, very, isn't it? Because and the very moment they say that, oh, uh, this administration is the most friendly and media, media friendly, friendly mm. Sadiq Adams were blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, yeah. I, and in, it, it's a very interesting thing that Muftal mentioned. The sheer number of journalists running the FA now, and this is probably the most, the, the frostiest I have seen in terms of the FA's relationship with journalists. And this is an FA run by mostly journalists. Yeah, it's it's weird. What does that speak to? It, it speaks to a bit of distrust between colleagues, isn't it? Like it's almost yeah, I like think, I think no, I think it's <laughs> almost like we've been there before, so we know them very well. Yeah, it's like That's they, what I mean. It's like they know, that, they know that if they allow the journalists to mm. come close to their team, they know the things people have been doing. They know that you when they go close to the team, ah, it's a, you've been you've been doing some things. I, I honestly so, don't understand what that, what this people. is all about. But on the more serious note, I think that it's unbelievable that with the experience that these people have had in the media. They would have really done things that appeals to the optics. You yes. see, th there's 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 an aspect of management that necessarily has to go in line with optics, so that the public belief in the institution is protected and trusted by the general public. Few people who understand these things will look at it and say this that that's an optic, so they don't mind. But the general populace will look at it and be like, I like the posture, I like the angle, so. When you're in the same hotel with Nigeria and, and you didn't even plan to have the, the media doing some engagement with your players, yes. as soon as you saw Nigeria do it, you should have straight away come up with something that, that resembles what Nigeria did. Yeah. You could have just done something. But for them to be so uh, blind to, to, the potential to, to, everything, benefits. Yeah, to everything that people are complaining about, it's weird, really, because and the distaste in the media. It's weird. It's almost as if they are living in, on one planet, and the rest of Ghana is on another, on another planet. And that for me is staggering, really. And meeting the press in Kumasi, I like the idea. Yeah, meeting the press. We've gone for this. It's been a disastrous Afcon. You want to answer questions, but I had a massive disappointment. And you see, on the back of what we had gone through at the Afcon. Tying it to what we went through two years ago, mm -hmm. it cannot be an accident. Quite clearly, something wasn't working. So, if you're going to meet journalists three weeks after, or a couple of weeks, two weeks after the disaster, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that you are coming there with a plan that gives us hope for the future. That's right. After all this talk that they did in Kumasi, there is nothing in there that 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 suggested that we are going to change the way take a different path and get different results it's I, almost didn't as get, I, I didn't get the impression i didn't of, get the impression there was nothing new there was nothing new it was only trumpeting what in their minds is an achievement and you see that is my biggest fear with the fa they, they, they have been reflecting because the same thing they said that they had achieved over in 2023 were the same things after our disaster in in, in, Africa, in Cote d'Ivoire. they were repeating so the GMA president will tell us that we do, we are forgotten that an under twenty team won the under twenty. Uh, uh, we uh, know Af that. We know that we've not forgotten. He even went on to make a mistake that our chant team were in the contest. No, they were not. They were knocked out of the group stages. That's true. You know, and so we admit that there are things you've done right. We just don't know if there was a method to it or it was by chance. If there's a method to it, show us the way. Because so that bring us along yes. so that we can believe in what you are doing and in fact we the media can educate Ghanaians that listen the national team might not be doing well but if you pay attention to what the FA is doing at under 17 and under 20 bro in the next four years we are sure that we'll perform better but because it's not taking us along because it's not showing us what you are doing with 17 20 and other teams it's impossible for us 
to actually say that that under 20 team that won the AFCON during COVID and couldn't make the World Cup was by any method. What was the method to it? That's the point. Absolutely. If there was, why has we? Where, Insha- why have Allah we not, and vibes? Hold on. Yes. <laughs> why have we not had sustained success? And why have so we not had a, a, a number of them? At least two. Yes. Graduate into our national team because I always say this: they can be accidental success, but True. they can never be accidental failure. Absolutely. No. no. So you can stumble on one success, but if you can't repeat it, it means it means it, it was, was by chance. Yes. It was an accident. But the failure has been so consistent. Thank you. And and so for me, my takeout from the presser was that I I I, I listened to everything. I was like, I'm not too sure if they they they, they figured out. A way to get us get us out of this mess before the next Afcon, which could be in January, February in Morocco. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, they are saying the same things, the same things that the president said uh, when he was campaigning at Congress and trumpeting what he considered an overachievement were the same things he was repeating. And listen, there was no real admission, and this one disappoint. When the president had the opportunity of addressing us, and then looked onto his paper, I was going to think that the first lines were going to be one of an apology. I was thinking that's the first time he's faced the media. The, the, first, that, time he, the first time we heard his voice, yes, post Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. And I was thinking, not even post Cote d'Ivoire, post he became the FA president because he has never met the media uh, since he was uh, re elected. Not, not even re elected. I've gone 2021. What he did was to uh, go on one radio station to the other and tell us that we never we, we don't have met no, here. Stop, stop. Stop. Uh, he's been on no, other no, platforms. He's just I'm saying, saying that, that post this disaster, yes, when he had an opportunity and, and in 2021. When he had an opportunity via your, uh, the sister platform in uh, Asempa, 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 yeah. he declined to apologize. And say, if we have Messi or Ronaldo, we should go and said a lot of things that were so rude and arrogant and in my opinion made no sense. They will block you. Then, oh, me have <laughs> yeah. if, Twitter, <laughs> ah, listen, Twitter, hey, you have you a GFA page people, please. and you've blocked yeah. me. What will happen? How would that affect block my business? People. No, no, it wasn't. I was blocked two years ago. Have they unblocked you? Was, I, was I it by mistake? I deserve block you. Yeah. Yeah. Even the president himself blocked me. You, you, you have you, you been unblocked? You moved they out. Unblock. You no, moved no, out. I am blocked myself, but they don't know how I am blocked myself. But I am blocked you myself. Went to, you went to beg the boss man. You went to boss man to block. To fear, God forbid. So how did you unblock yourself? That I would not say publicly. I would say it up there. I would not say it up there. Please. But move down. Who's that there? Yes. Me, sir, for blocking with my personal I say, I say that the GFA people, they don't miss this show. They are always listening. Yeah, they are listening. So they've heard you. They'll block, block you again. Hey, oh, they can block. Oh, good luck. Let you go and block what again. I'm say, when I'm, yes. You see, what I'm saying is, yes. when he had an opportunity to speak for the first time, yes. I was thinking that the president could personally, not if it matter, yeah. not a school matter, and that's what I was looking for on his maybe social media page because he comes there to post things. Yeah, all the time. He, he spoke about NSA not using the stadium. It's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. that that was unacceptable yeah. to him, and all of us agreed with him that the NSA is, is using the page for other things. That one was okay for him to find his phone, open Facebook, and post that. Yes, but he couldn't. After we went through the pain of being knocked out of the Afcon, pick his phone, get on Facebook, or draw something on his own letterhead and apologize first and foremost before even. He meets his people because whatever you do, whatever explanation you've got, we are failed. It, there is no, you see, you can't explain the failure. You can only take responsibility yes. and apologize. He didn't do it. Then when he was speaking, you see, he's talking about he's talking about things that I don't like the idea of the whole GFA uh, academy. That yeah. IS in Borga, the yeah, GFA academy. Yeah, they, are, in Borga. they are elite school. They are elite so, school. I like these ideas, but you see, and he mentioned it, they don't communicate well. I like that idea but again we can i want to ask where where are the coaches who are going to train these kids coming from right who has trained these coaches to be able to groom these talents this we want the best for ghana football these are genuine questions so these are the things we'd like to engage them about yeah i right? think one thing that he said was that also that um he feels the rfes themselves are not even doing the communication well yeah and I think you just said that, yeah. that the FA has an issue with, with communication. communication. Yes. We don't think, and we've never said that everything the FA does is bad. No. They're doing some good no. things. But those good things, like Sitio rightly said, what are they? What are the methods? We don't what know. are the if methods? We, what do you if do if to we, achieve Because it? every now and then you see some coaches are going through training, but they don't tell us, like, we, you, you understand. Or maybe there is a system to the juvenile football league that you are running. All we see is you are donating balls. You are do- that one. You are quick to publish. Yes, but you, you are donating boot. 
you know, you don't, you don't, you don't engage. You yes, don't sharing computers and printers. You know exactly. And me, what still pains me? What still pains me is that in 2024 we still boast about coast football. Even for blasters, matters they don't engage. They block out the media for blasters, my said. How much more youth football? Yeah. How much more juvenile football? Even blasters, they don't let. They don't want the media to come close. Yes. In fact, and how you just you just brought my mind back. So 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 find your thought. This one in Abidjan, I've always said journalists should not also have that sense of self entitlement that oh it is my right to get to the national team. It is never our right. It is the association that determines when they want us to get close to the team one of the things out however found un unacceptable was the fact that we were told and you mean uh, journalists were told journalists were in told abidjan? in abidjan mm -hmm. that we should stay about 150 meters away from the team bus when the players were alighting from the team bus due to security reasons ah why the journalists why would they we go did we go there with guns mm -hmm. to go and shoot the players? Was it a GFA what? arrangement or CAF arrangement? <laughs> with, see, Egypt. No, no, just no, no, a moment. Answer, answer just that, a moment. That. I'm asking. Was it a GFA arrangement or CAF arrangement? It is a communicate that came to us from the me the CAF media team that were there. Calf however, yes, however, so GFA, the good. same the same CAF media team were with us when we were with Team Egypt. Team Egypt, the distance between you and I, I was just standing like this when Salad Salad descended from the bath and went inside. We were like 10, 15 meters away from them. When it came to our very own black stars, because we went to the Egypt training ground, because the LOC did the arrangement in a way that when you go to one training and they will pass you to the next training. So we went to Egypt's training ground. We were standing close <coughs> to the players when they al 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 alighted from their bus. But when we went to the black stars, Rowan Williams, she's a... Um, uh, that's the word, Royal Williams. Hey. That, he's the goalkeeper of the. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Born. Rowena. Rowena. She's called Rowena. Rowena is the media officer for Bafana Bafana. Yeah. She asked us, she said, due to security reasons, we've been told to stay about 100, 150 meters away from the Black Stars team bus. I personally asked her, who gave you this directive? The GFA. And she said, I know I am speaking to a journalist. The directive is that stay 150 meters away from the team bus. So, if she allowed us to be just 10, 15 meters away from our uh, from Egypt, team Egypt, right? Why would she tell us to be over 100 meters away from our very own black star? Because uh, your very own black stars are a special breed of people. They, so, so if you stay so too close, you cannot state categorically that the GFA asked them to do it. But if she could allow us to be close to Egypt and can't allow us to be close to the Black Stars, then definitely... It's a logical a conclusion to make It's that. a logical conclusion to make that the GFA said, don't let them come. Very well, Muftar. Due to security um, reasons. Okay. What are the security reasons? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, let me connect uh, Daniel Kranting uh, from Abidjan. He's finally found time for us. <coughs> Daniel K, all good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm Did good. you? I think you missed this, but someone sent a message that now that you are married, you will not come back from Abidjan with a story for us like you did Papa, when you came Papa, back. From Papa, Papa. <laughs> you see, the fact is that married people respect marriage, but it doesn't mean that unmarried people respect. But I'm a nice guy. I'm a very fresh boy. So don't move to me, but I'll reject you. <laughs> All right. Uh, listen. Th thanks for making time. Uh, let's talk about the. Uh, Let's talk about the AFCON final. It's all set now um, between Nigeria, of course, and Cote d'Ivoire. You've been there for a few days now. Um, what is it? What is it looking like in terms of where the momentum is and what the feeling is like in both camps? And what should we expect on Sunday? I saw you were at that Cote d'Ivoire versus DR Congo game. The atmosphere was next level. I'm imagining that. On the final day on Sunday, you would have to multiply that by, by ten, by ten or by one thousand. I'm telling you, it was it was absolutely electric. But thanks, even before I even before I talk about the the Ivory Coast game, even before I talk about the Ivory Coast game, um, Mustafa made a brilliant point when he said, "Look, um, it's actually in the rules, the rules and regulations for the host nation and then uh, member associations. You can actually request for extra measures to be taken." 
um, for your hotel arrangement in terms of security and things. So uh, Muftar is right if he concludes that it's very possible that the GFP asked um, CAP officials not to allow the uh, Black Stars to be that close to the media men. But we condemned it when it was happening. We condemned it when uh, he first reported it when he was there. But unfortunately, right now, I think it would be very hypocritical for us as journalists to say it's, a, it's, a, it's wrong because we all saw what happened after the team got knocked out. Um, our colleagues handling insults, some threatening to beat up the coach. So as of now, um, if fans did it, we we'll condemn it. And if journalists do it, too, you have to condemn it. Yes. Um, some may ask us where it is in the tenets of journalism, but it is wrong. What is wrong is wrong. Look. Um, you can't, in as much as we didn't agree with the GFE, they can come and tell us that, look, this is your behavior after the Mozambique game is the reason why we said we didn't want you guys 150 meters um, close to the team. So what is fair is fair. It doesn't, it, it doesn't depend on who is happening to or when it's happening. But to the Ivory Coast game, look, you talk about the atmosphere during the DRC and, and, and Cote d'Ivoire game. I was, I was really wishing that Gary was there to experience it. I think he went for um, the game that was very nice on paper with uh, Nigeria and, and uh, South Africa. <laughs> but in terms of the raw vibe and euphoria, look, the so Cote d'Ivoire DRC game was unreal. I've, I've never witnessed anything like that. I was at the Mushuda Biola Stadium when Ghana faced Nigeria. If you remember the echo, the sound, the 60,000 capacity, the noise, it was lovely. But this was, this was different. And this was a whole party atmosphere. And that's something that... So I asked a number of journalists who had been there longer. And they attested to how the organization has been brilliant in terms of bringing the party few to the, to the stadium. So it's not just about the 90 minutes of football. It's about the entire experience. A couple of hours before, there's a DJ, there's music, there's dancing. And that's what we, we saw throughout. Look, Fence, in the final, we've, we've, we've actually agreed that we, we will have to be at the stadium about six, seven hours before kickoff. Because... People are eager. They, and, and, the, and the general sentiment around Abidjan is they really believe that their, their name is written on the trophy. They talk about destiny. They talk about how just a couple of weeks ago they were on the verge of going out. In fact, had Ghana stayed, had, had we beaten Mozambique, Cote d'Ivoire would have been out of the Please, 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 Danike, Danike, um, relax. Had somebody no, not, just, ta- no, no, has somebody not touched the ball? Some ball. Do you understand? Charlie, Exactly. Had somebody not touched the ball, and that was literally like three minutes to the end. So they really believed they were going out. But some way, somehow, the group stage finished, and they had just clinched the spot in the round of 16. Even after that, the guy tells me that, look, they were going to face Senegal, and all they wanted was a good performance. And then the, the team just went on to win. Against Mali at halftime, they were down a goal. The Malians went on to take the lead. And then some way, somehow, they found an equalizer, and were able to win the game even before it went to penalty shootout. So they believe this is destiny. They believe that their name is written on the trophy. And I even spoke to another colleague journalist who, and I was not talking to him as a journalist, I was talking to him as a fan. And he said, look, even the fact that it had to take the Federation to sack um, uh, Gassé, who is a foreigner, and bring one of their own, he says it's, he feels like it is just divine that one of their own would take them to win this competition that is being hosted on their own soil. So when you look at some of these things, you... you, you you can't help but that hope that they are able to do it. But on the other hand, also, look, we have to credit the Nigerians. They've been brilliant from, from especially after the, after the second game. A very difficult team to break down. Um, you don't find a lot of chances against them. But then you also find a way to, with their, with their uh, uh, front two, with uh, Osimen and Lukman, a fantastic partnership who always find a way to get the goals for them. So... For me, I think it's a, it's a perfect final. And even if you go back to the official song of the competition, it's a, com- a, a collaboration between an Ivorian and a Nigerian, Yemi Aladi and their magic system. So it's like every, we knew before knowing, we knew before knowing that Nigeria and, and, and Cote d'Ivoire will go to the final. And for me, they have been the two best teams of the competition, of course. Um, and it's, 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 it's only right that they, they find themselves in the final. Interesting. You know, and uh, I, I want to stay with uh, the guys at Nabijon. Uh, Gary uh, as well. Uh, listen, uh-huh. Yeah, Gary, listen, um, the Nigerians, uh, and they're the ones that you are closest to. Like, the conversation, basically, it, 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 it's all about Nigeria being the better team, being the more disciplined team, being the more measured team. And it looks like 
uh, on paper, when you look at everything around this Nigeria team, uh, Daniel mentioned that the Ivorians think is destiny. I think the Nigerians think their destiny is greater in this match. Uh, Gary, I uh, cannot hear Gary. Okay, that's fine. Um, but let me come to Sicho. Uh, when Gary comes back, we'll join him. Um, but Sicho, let's talk yeah. about what the defining moments will be in this game. Um, Nigeria have made it to the final playing not the most exciting football, just playing efficient football. They've averaged the least possession in this tournament. They've still made it to the final. They don't care. Um when they've needed their goalkeeper, he's come to the party. The whole conversation before that game against South Africa was he wasn't tested. And for the first time when he was tested, he stood up. Their defense, rock solid. The strikers, yes, yeah, so Simeon hasn't been scoring, but he's being a handful for defending, and he's being at the center of everything good that has happened. Lukman is being in the form of his life. The midfielders have been good. Is this it for them? Like, from everything that you've seen from both teams. Yeah. What would it come down to? I think it's for Nigeria to lose, really. And I think it will come down to... For, 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 for Cote d'Ivoire, it wouldn't be about how good their players are because I, I, I just think that Nigeria have got a better group of players than Cote d'Ivoire have got. What Cote d'Ivoire would have been riding on would be what Danny was speaking about. All the non-football factors, the the whole lack of being here, or the whole, the whole mystery of finding themselves in the final when everything was against them for many, many, many occasions. And Dani has gone through all of that. But I think that when you put that game onto the pitch and you look at what Nigeria have got to offer against Cote d'Ivoire, it's got to be Nigeria's to lose. The one thing that Cote d'Ivoire would have for them would be that because they are hosts, they would have their fans absolutely rocking behind them. But they're coming up against a Nigerian team that throughout that team have got incredible personality. So one thing is for sure, they won't crash under that pressure of the, of the fans. It's impossible for me to think that Nigeria will walk into that stadium, look at how those fans are behind Cote d'Ivoire and crumble. The personality of Osimen, uh, it will be Trustikon, Basi, Ajayi, uh, uh, name them. Big big Aina, Onyeka. Uh, Onyeka. It's, I, I, don't, I just don't see how Nigeria is a team that is going to go. In, if it's, and to, to be more respectful to Ghana, if that is Team Ghana against Cote d'Ivoire in the final, and that is going to be the atmosphere. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared because I look at our players. I think some of them are too young. They don't have that experience. Maybe some of them are not playing at it. so much of the highest level. They could crumble. But when you watch this Nigerian team and the personality they've got, the aspect of the fans playing their role for Cote d'Ivoire won't affect them. But more tactically, what we've seen of, what we've seen of Cote d'Ivoire do now with the team that they've got is they're going to... St- Necessarily, I think they're going to play with the four-three-three, and if what I think is right, this is going to play out. Mm. The four-three-three. I think Sergio Reyes is going to come back to the starting lineup. I think uh, Kosoni is going to come back to the starting lineup alongside Indica, and it, 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 they are going to be at the back. You know, the back line will, will pick itself. In the midfield again, I think it's going to be Seri sitting at the base, Fofana and Kessie playing off him in a little advanced role. I think some of the Dean Grant will start alongside Gradol in wide area yeah. and Seb Haller, Now that he's fit completed eight nine minutes of the previous game is going to lead the attack so that's a very much straight 4 3 3 for nigeria though they've been very comfortable in that five at the back and four in the midfield and one body up front mm-hmm. it's five four one for nigeria but the way they operate the four is where i get scared for Cote d'Ivoire okay. because Cote d'Ivoire has shown us that now their strength has become cross the ball to Seb Heller and it can be dangerous. Ever since he got back into the team. And we saw it against Mali. Seb could have scored with a brilliant header, got hit the woodwork and didn't score. In the, in, against Congo, he had a free header, could have scored. Yeah. He just, yeah. just took his eye off the ball and missed it. Then he scored with a cross coming into the box. So I think that is how Cote d'Ivoire have looked, their game is looked like. They are not creative from the midfield. They are mm-hmm. creative from wide areas. Unfortunately for them, Nigeria have got some of the best defenders when it comes to 1v1. In the wide area, Ola Aina is brilliant in 1v1 defending. Sanusi has shown that he's mm. brilliant in it because you, can, you don't get past him. No, no many women have gone past and him. And when you do... But even when you do... You're looking at... Bon, Basi. Basi is covering. <laughs> so, so they've got what it takes, Nigeria, for what they've shown in this tournament to stop what threats Cote d'Ivoire have shown that they can pose. And more importantly, 
even if you cross the ball, Trusty Kong, Ajayi, and Basi are good enough in the air to deal with those balls. Unless it is so pinpoint that it's impossible to deal with, to deal with the ball that comes to Sabhela. Now, that midfield three that they've got, Seri, Fofana, and yes. Kessie, they are going to be coming up against Iwobi and Onyeka in midfield. Where does Sangari fit in there? Sangari will start. I don't think okay. he starts. I think Michel Sari takes... And that, that was one of the things. Sangari, Kessie, Fofana, very similar footballers. Sari is the very different type who yeah. gives them a bit of control, recycles more, and gets the ball going. And, and, and they've used him well in that regard. But when you play that midfield three, Nigeria appeared to have a midfield two in Iwobi and Onyeka. But hang on. The players who are supposed to be wingers in that Nigerian team have played as central midfielders. Basically. So, basically. So, it will be on Onyeka will sit as the base midfield, as maybe two DMs. But, on top of those two DMs are Ademina Lukman and Moses Simon. Who are not really playing like white players. Like not, typical white players. They are not, their starting positions are not wide. Yeah. Their starting positions are inverted into midfield. So, that creates a midfield box. And it is that midfield box that we saw Mali use against Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. And in the first 60 minutes or so, completely suffocated Cote d'Ivoire and Cote d'Ivoire couldn't move. Some way, some money lost it. But the signs were there that Cote d'Ivoire couldn't deal with that midfield box. And that's what Nigeria poses. And for Nigeria, you mentioned it. They don't want the ball. Nah, they they will try and give a lot the of ball. the ball to Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cote d'Ivoire are also not good on the ball. Mm. So it will, be it will be Nigeria winning the balls of Cote d'Ivoire and quickly transitioning. As for the back four of Cote d'Ivoire, Osimhen is enough. He can handle that. Give them the He's press. Gonna be a handful. A handful. And then Ademila Lukman Moses Simon will get in there. So on paper, I think that Nigeria have got everything set to beat Cote d'Ivoire. And Nigeria have got the personality to handle the number 12 man who will be the crowd that Cote d'Ivoire are going to put on the show. So I just from, think Nigeria. From, mm. I, th well, I mean, I just think that I think Nigeria, I think this is where all the luck and all the destiny talks ends for Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria for me. Wow. Barring any unforeseen circumstances, are champions. Nigeria and, and ca you, cannot I, win the Afcon. You remember the <laughs> you remember the, the, the stats the stats I was posting yesterday. Uh huh. Um, in many of the finals, like since two thousand and six, teams in the same group have reached the final six times. Right. Teams who have previously played each other in the same group in the same group have ended up in the final in the final six, six times. times since two thousand and six. Since two thousand, that's a lot of times. And guess what? Whoa, the team that. that always That's wins... That's a lot of times. The team that always wins the group game ends up winning the final. Apart from 2013, when it ended draw between Nigeria and Burkina Faso, and Nigeria won it in the final. The rest that won their group game ended up winning take the final. Take me through them. How about 2006? No, no, take me through them. 2006, Egypt, Egypt and then Cote d'Ivoire were in the same yeah. group. And they beat them again. Egypt beat Cote d'Ivoire 3-1. In the final, they won by a penalty yeah. shootout. And which are the other ones? Okay, so we can go to 2013, Afcon. But 2013. Nigeria and In fact, so. let's go to 20, uh, 2008, 2008 in Ghana. Egypt and Cameroon were in the same group. Yeah. yeah. Egypt, Egypt won the double. group game 4 2. Yeah. I remember in that. Final, I was there in Kumasi. Okay. Yeah. In the final, Egypt, one Egypt one won 1 0. Right, okay. Then in 2013, uh, um, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria and Burkina. Burkina Faso, they were in the same group. The group game ended 1 1. But when they met in the final, Sunday in Bas yeah. Yes. Then, then came the 2019 Afcon, when we had um, Senegal versus Algeria. Yeah. They were in the same group. Algeria beat Senegal 1-0 in the group stage. In the final, they beat them 1-0. Okay. So those are the numbers. You yeah, just yeah. mentioned three, yeah. No, that's four. No, no, no that's six. There are yeah, six of them. So I was waiting for the others. No, no, so, so, no so because I'll just mention them off the cuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. just mention them yeah. off the cuff. But so I, the, I, I mentioned six games, but not six tournaments. No, I said since no, 2006. He's mentioned, take, no, he's mentioned... He's not since mentioned... Since 2006. He's, yes, he's right. not mentioned... He's mentioned the 06, Egypt yes. and Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. He mentioned 2013, o Nigeria and Burkina Faso. O he mentioned 2008, yeah. Egypt and uh, Cameroon. And then he mentioned 2019. Okay, so... so nah, Senegal I mean, and Algeria. So it's level one. One, yeah, level one. Okay, so this, this is it. Uh, look, the one... So let me just start. 206, right? Don't repeat we, we've mentioned you said that all one. of them. Which one is 208, left? we've mentioned that one. Uh -huh. 2013, we've mentioned that one. Yes. And 2019. Yes. So now we are in 2023. Okay, so this uh -huh. is the same so time. Five. Uh -huh. So five. So yeah. same teams have been in. Interesting. Uh, in the, in the, that's an, I, didn't, I didn't even process that. That's yeah, but that is a very interesting <laughs> one. That's a very interesting one. Really. So if that is to go by. Na, na, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if that's anything to go by, chat and all. I'm talking. Oh, Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. No, but there's also one thing that we've not paid attention to that since 2008, Host Nation has never been to the final, except this year. So that's And when the Host Nation has been to the final, they are not winning it. 2004. Tunisia, Egypt? Yes. Back to back. 2004, yeah. Tunisia, yeah. Egypt, they won it. And then now. So, and now. And now. So that chat too. Atu. And so, and now that's all. You're listening to Game Plan on 99.7 Joe FM. Oh, uh, also on 103.9 Hits FM. Don Robby of Ars- Arsenal Fan TV or AFTV uh, is joining us very shortly. The show is proudly sponsored by Petrosol and DSTV. Petrosol, every drop matters just as every penny counts. Uh, you have to know good quality fuel enhances your vehicle performance and reduces maintenance costs. Take no risk in times like this. All you need is value for your money. Look no further. Drive to the next Petrosol fuel station uh, for your clean, accurate quantity fuel suitable for new technology vehicles. Be a happy customer. Fill with smile. Drive more miles and save some money. Petrosol, your clean quality fuel in full quantity. Petrosol, always a delightful experience. Let me also tell you about uh, the vision board party. If you're serious about planning your life goals, then join Lady Sam's vision board party on the 10th of February. That's tomorrow uh, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Learn how to strategize and plan excitingly. You can just call them on 050 1518 for more information. 050 1518 Book your spaces now. So if you are into organizing parties, you want to do, you want to learn how to do it and that kind of thing, talk to them. Talk to the Vision um, Party Board uh, and make sure that you get uh, all the quality information that you need. I'm going to read this tweet. Uh, Achuta Maklu uh, is dressed like Togwe here and he's joined us on the show as well. Achu, Charlie, what's the occasion? Oh, Jaule Shinde. That's a good one. That's a good one. Jaule Shinde. Jaule Shinde. Complete with the whole hat and everything. Bro. The smock and the, the hat. The Jaule Shinde before the Mapuka Jaule Shinde. Yeah. 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 On Sunday. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I man. don't know why people want, want Nigeria to win this thing. Tell you the thing. I'm, I'm no, so Nigeria, Nigeria can't win. They shouldn't win. Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> no, no, we, deep we down are finished. Mount Paper, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are finished. I'm still getting a lot of messages about the language conversation. Actually, you missed. We had a very interesting linguistics oh, class yeah, here. You missed that. Um, Musbar Razak, he said, shout out to all the Kotokoli community. <laughs> <laughs> we also did a system <laughs> inside. <laughs> yeah, Musbar. So I asked him uh, where Kotokoli is spoken, and right. he says you can find it in, you can find that language in the OT region. Yeah. They have some in the yeah. Volta, yeah. 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 and they have yeah. some in the North as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, know, I know in the OT region there is that. Yeah. I, 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 I know of the, the North. Uh, they yeah. are around. Um, Cherry Pony area and all oh, that. that's yeah. nice. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, amazing. The multiplicity and the variety of our culture, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin, he says, Muftar and Abila, the name is spelled Momo, but it's not pronounced the same way. <laughs> 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 and uh, and we have some Ghanaian in Zima bearing such a name as well. He oh, says, Oh, okay. Yeah, this okay. is a in message from Benjamin. He says, um, Okay, friends, friends. Okay, finish with the language. Okay, and then he says. Um, when you come to the Ga community, they speak the Ga in Dangwe, but we have different accents even in the Ga language. Yeah. Yeah. No, to, to, well, that one uh, is the dialect. Fence. Fence. Yes, yes. So, Don Kalito. Ah, yes. Don Kalito. Oh, Don Ka. <laughs> Don Ka. Don Kalito. Kalitus. Kalitus apparatus. Ah. He, he has sent a message that, yes, so it's, it's probably it's six, right? Yeah. And he said that, so the last one to make the six we're talking about yeah. is the 1990 Afghan, where Algeria beat Nigeria 5-1. In the group, and then in the final, Algeria beat Nigeria by a go to nil. There you okay. go. So, so history chats now too. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got a message here from the taxpayer. He says, Good afternoon, Fentu Tahiru Fentu. If you call me, Abiba, I won't read your message. <laughs> uh, Jojo, can you open that message for me? He Is says, this Abiba? Yes, nice language discussion. He says, Um, okay, where is it? Uh, all right, not this one, the other one. Thank you. All right, it says a uh, nice language discussion, and indeed, the language. Uh, okay, let me continue. It says, Good afternoon, Fentu. Nice language discussion, and indeed, the language of Africans is fading out gradually. Did you know that same parents are paying, uh, some parents are paying some good fees for private teachers to teach their words their own local language? Yep. Yes, it's happening. Paying for the language they speak. 
and that they could have taught their children themselves. Hmm, very sad. I won't comment on the NSA and GFA causing nothing. Uh, the, because, sorry, I won't comment on the NSA and GFA because nothing will happen to them based on previous happenings. Why is the NSA boss still opposed? Does it mean the president who uh, can disappoint him condones his actions? Uh, okay, I think you mean the president who appointed him condones his actions. In any serious jurisdiction, this man would be found wanting by now. But we are in Ghana. All right. Uh, there's another message here. He says, hi, friend. Good afternoon to you and your crew. Can we stop talking about GFM Blaster? You see, people are tired. Yeah. People it's, are it's really tired. It's a tiring tired. conversation. Uh, it says if but we, we can't, can't get tired. It says we can't, if we cannot sit down to think and develop a plan for sports to flourish, what prevents us from copying from other successful nations? The irony is every day GFA behaves as if there's nothing wrong with sports in our nation. Thank As you. for Ghana football, I'm done. This is from... Dela or is it the Dale? lack of admission? Dale. He's not. You are not done. Yeah. Dale. Next time they get you <laughs> angry, you will come back. The lack of admission. <laughs> yeah. Dell. Dell in Madrid. Uh, let me read this message to you guys. Right. This is a message from um, from a journalist, and that journalist is Zach Lowe, and Zach Lowe is a, um, a UK-based journalist. Right. Very. I'm sure Gary Al Smith has worked with him before. <laughs> now, Zach says. And this is something that we've had. Zach basically says, uh, let me find that tweet. He tweeted this. And I want us to pick on it. Zach Love is tweeted. says, when this AFCON is over, the Premier League should call up each of the tournament's referees and have them give the Premier League referees a seminar on how to use VAR without taking up 15 minutes to come to a decision and making yourself into the main characters. This is Zach Lowy former BBC reporter, and basically saying something that a lot of people have pointed out at this AFCON, the officiating. Ah. It's been top, 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 top notch. And Mamadou Haidara and his team, who is the CACAF head of referees from Mali, they've done a brilliant job. Actually, listen, the officiating at this tournament, and this call, CAF, 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 CAF should cash out. The Premier League should be calling the Howard Webb and his people should definitely... This is not out of place because the, ref, the referee in the Premier League is being in absolute shambles, especially when it comes to the US use of VAR. The CAF or AFCON referees have shown that it's not that complicated. No, it's not. Um, and you see, people are making these calls not because it is sexy at this point to say African referees are doing well. But for a long time, peop the incompetence of the referees in Europe has created this illusion that there is something wrong with VAR, which for me was unacceptable. What we have seen at this tournament is the excellent application of the technology in a manner that does not distort the pace of the game, in a manner that does not undermine the authority of the referee, in a manner that ultimately upholds the spirit in which the game is played. And so when we have seen that they are being deployed in the Premier League, in La Liga, in the UEFA Champions League, people have had reason to question because sometimes even the VAR interpretation of uh, the regulations is so clumsy that it leaves people questioning whether or not the rules have changed. And I'll give you an example. Often when handballs are given, referees sorry coaches and players question whether or not the handball is changed and one of the popular refrains these days is we don't even know what the handball rule means anymore but you don't see that at uh, this afcon we haven't seen that at this afcon there is clarity over what the rule book is there is clarity over the respective context under which the rules have have to be applied look i one of the things that i was thinking about this morning was that I haven't had any pundits or journalists attempt to explain the spirit and letter of the law again at this AFCON. Because the referees are applying it to it, the letter. There's no so ambiguity. Th th so there's no need for there's Achu to come no, and no, explain no, no. what the there, handball rule is. No, there's no ambiguity. So they are uh, interpreting the rules correctly. They are using discretion where necessary in a manner that is unquestionable, right? And also consistent with the needs of the game as at that point. Right. So uh, that is on the side of the referee, getting the right calls. And then in terms of the VAR referees, they are not afraid to call a referee and say, you need to look at this. Right. right? And when they do, 
they do this in record time. Yesterday we were discussing how in the South Africa Nigeria game they reviewed four different instances in one action shot. Yeah. So the red card, whether or not the defender was the last man, whether or not the contact was a foul, whether or not the Nigerian attacker was offside, and whether or not the foul happened inside or outside the box. Yeah. And they got it spot on. Every single one of them. It was timely. Right? Even before that incident, there was the Osim, there was the Nigeria supposed the second goal. <laughs> and then so you are beginning to see clarity in terms of what the rule is. The interpretation of that communication to the players who now are beginning to show more faith in the referee's appreciation of what the regulations are. And like I said before, one of the beautiful things for me is that unlike in the Premier League where referees with 25 to 30 years of experience like Mike Dean are fumbling in the VAR room, young referees like Daniel Lai, our own, is sitting in the VAR room as the head of VAR for one match and he's getting the decision spot on back to back to back to back. They are demystifying everything that European football suggested to be it. And look, what I've does it come down to? Is it competence it comes or is down it protection to, of egos? No, it comes down to competence. And I'll give you an example. To answer the question of egos, yes. right? The, the Tottenham was spent, was it Tottenham was Liverpool match? Yeah, Diaz, Luis Diaz's goal. That yes. was the offside Oh, uh, the big mess this season. Anthony Taylor. Mm. And then the subsequent admission from Mike Dean mm. that he felt reluctant uh, to correct the referee. I made suggestions that it was because they are close buddies and all of that. You, that kind of ego, that kind of situation where camaraderie becomes an encumbrance. And because you feel, friends be my guy. Yeah. No, but that's what it is. So, okay. friends be my guy. So, even when he makes a mistake, I cannot correct him. It no longer it exists like... because if you look at, if you look at the <laughs> referees that calf is the pool fence behavior so when camaraderie becomes because an incumbra yes <laughs> what is this it's what is this <laughs> so, hey, hey, hey. you couldn't put this any other way <laughs> that, that's the first thing that came into my head when, 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 when friendship becomes a hindrance yes and one who knows when you choose friend, friendship over you know, be ob- objectivity. <laughs> Basically, I don't know whether these words are part of that first hundred common words. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> ah, Charlie, Charlie, familiarity breeds kind of GRE English. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> familiarity breeds content. Thank and, you. And now we understand. Yes. <laughs> and we haven't seen that at this point <laughs> because, bro, calf has learned from its own mistakes. So when we've seen the referees appointed for the calf Champions League and Confederation Cup. Yes. Recently, African Football League in the past. It's been from one block. So, hard to play AS Massa and the referees are not oh, from, from Algeria. Or from, uh, or from Congo. Uh-huh. All of them are coming from Congo. It is easy for them to be compromised. But CAF has thought about that and said, this time around, we're going to pick referees from all over the place. Right? Mm. And look, when it comes to football, the language does not matter so much. As much as the language of competence. That's and right. that is the language that the referees have been speaking. So they understand the, the game, the rules. They know how they apply and under what circumstance they are to apply this regulation. So look, Calf did not stumble upon onto this success by accident. This success is not accidental. Mm-hmm. They have shifted from the paradigm. They have changed the way they were picking the referees. And perhaps I've taken these guys through every single training that is necessary. Because look, you could have isolated incidents of good officiating right or good var interventions yes. but one every single match and i don't know you help me yesterday you referenced the the consistency in the var interventions yeah yeah i think that the the penalty egypt had against mozambique is a carbon copy of what nigeria in the group stage got against Cote d'Ivoire. yeah where the striker gets the first defender and attempt to yeah. kick the ball kicks the, the player it, when you put that side by side it's almost like a replay and it happened a day within with, within 48 hours this happened today the next day you know that, that how many happened. times and, and, and then the conversation uh, you know uh, it, it was in fact when the second incident happened yeah. anyone that watched the first one would have said mm, called back if to that it. was a pen yeah. if that was a and penalty, i remember in fact on that day this was your a, man amokachi who was in co yes. yes and he said that 
I saw that one against Egypt. And if that, <laughs> if that one was a pen against Egypt, this one is definitely a pen. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. That's, that's, and that's, surely, that's, that's, and surely, it was a pen. So it's the consistency in the application of the rules and the laws that is absolutely busting it at the African. Yeah. How many and times in Europe have we not had reason to question why the rules are applied differently to scenarios that look similar? Yeah. Very interesting. All right, so the officiating at the AFCON basically getting some big props. I don't know how much uh, Don Robbie has been watching the AFCON, but he's uh, he's managed to join us here on the show from AFTV. Don, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. I've been watching, I've been, <laughs> yeah. I've been watching a lot of AFCON. Uh, you, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. Wa watching a lot of AFCON. It's been good. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I didn't. I didn't get to watch enough Ghana though because yeah. they didn't last long. He had to drop that. He had to drop. He had to sneak that one. We are actually trying to forget that. He had to sneak the slimy. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, because. Pate didn't come, so he didn't care. No, but I, I, it, it, no, I, I wanted I wanted you guys to do well. I think it was, I was really shocked at how disappointing it was for Ghana. But it's been a great tournament. And to me, the most entertaining team has been Ivory Coast. Just the way yeah. they've just come from the dead. They have and nine lives, just, bro. They've got nine lives, yeah. <laughs> I think they might win it. I think they might win it. Do you know, sometimes you just think... Uh, yeah. A team, their the name's written. Team has to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, 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 and, yeah. And I think they needed the drama to to discover themselves in this tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you just walked into. A, by the way, a, ladies and gentlemen, our special guest is in. This is Robbie Lyle of AFTV. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for him. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Where's Kelechi? <laughs> <laughs> He's probably uh, you're excited for Saturday, yeah, for Sunday, yeah. for the um, finals. So. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been here a couple of days. Where have you been? I've been to uh, Kimasi. Yes. Yeah. Um, How was that? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. We went there uh, yesterday. We saw the Ashanti King. Oh, you met us before. Um, so it was that. Wow. That was amazing. And the day before that, we went to the uh, to the Gold Coast. Yeah, Cape Coast. Cape Coast. Cape Coast. Cape yes, Coast. Yes, yes. Yeah, and that was very emotional, very moving yeah. to go there and experience that. Um, yeah, so, so we've been having a wonderful time. It's been great meeting lots of uh, fans over here in Ghana. And uh, yeah, I was just gearing up for the, the big one on Sunday. Yeah. The watch party. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So Basically, that's what's brought you down here. My friend, has he tasted Jollof yet? Okay. Of you course. See, he has. <laughs> So the I very first night I arrived, man, that was the that was one of the first things to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so oh, yeah. Have you had Nigerian jollof yet? I've had that before, yeah. Now you tell me which one are you picking? Huh? <laughs> he had the question. He had the question. Now you tell me. But you no, see. Now you tell me. But you see. You've had Nigerian jollof. You, you know what, right? Yeah. They're both really. I have to. Be, I have to sit on the fence. And be, I keep saying this everywhere I go. I've got to be diplomatic because I have to go home. <laughs> yeah. And you see, and the <laughs> reason, <laughs> and, and Kelechi is there waving. <laughs> <Kelechi. laughs> there are a lot of Nigerians that I know, right? So, right, and they already warned me before I come. Right? So, you know? But the 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 jollof here is really nice, man. Really nice. Yeah. I think I think when I've had the Nigerian one, it's a bit more spicier. Is it? Uh, I think the one here is spicy with a, I don't know, it's got a little bit more flavour to it, I feel. The, yeah. the one the one in... Um, so are you saying Niger that Nigerian jollof is flavourless? I didn't say that. <laughs> Stop, Stop it. it. <laughs> Stop it, yeah. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm just drawing conclusions. I'm just drawing conclusions. You know, man. I didn't know this jollof war was so deep until I got here. You know? ah, <laughs> yeah, really? We it's take it very personal. It's very deep and it means a lot to us. <laughs> you know, that's why if I ask you who you think will win the AFCON, you cannot say Nigeria. So you chose the right answer. I, I actually just, you know, from before even the semi-final, I was just like, I feel Ivory Coast, their name's yeah. written on... Because just the way they've got there, just like all these last minute goals, last kick of the game, yeah. penalty shoot, it just it's you mad. start to think to yourself, who's gonna stop that team? Like it's the momentum. Yeah. You know, momentum's so so important in football. So yeah, I'm I'm edging towards them. And 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 of course they're at home. And when you're at yes. home in front of your in front of your home crowd, momentum's a big thing. I was at the World Cup in um Qatar and remember um you know, Argentina, they lost to, yeah, yeah they yeah. lost to Saudi Arabia. But yeah. then after that, they just started, I was at all of their games and they wow. just started to build a momentum going. And I knew they was going to win that World Cup. I was just like, they'll win it. Yeah. They'll win yeah. it. It's just, 
the whole messy thing and the story. You, you, you kind of get that a lot of times in those sort of tournaments. There's like a story to it, you know? So yeah. I could be wrong, but I, I, I just feel that for me, I, I can see them winning it. I'm glad that you mentioned the AFCON. I've got, uh, you just walked right into an AFCON conversation that we were having. And it's on the back of a, uh, a tweet that this journalist put out, Zach Lowy, uh, who used to work for the BBC. And this is what he tweeted. He says, when this AFCON is over, the Premier League should call up each of the tournament's referees and have them give the Premier League referees a seminar in how to use VAR without taking out 15 minutes to come to a decision and making it about themselves. And I, I 100% agree with him. And you see the way VAR has been used at AFCON, the way they reach decisions quickly, even sometimes of not, you know, like in the Premier League, if they go to the screen, you already know what's going to happen. <laughs> you're like, why even bother go to the screen? We know that you're going to overturn it or whatever, right? But at least here, and also I was at the, I was at the Asia Cup yes. um, in Qatar about, uh, about a few weeks ago. Yeah. Same there as well. Wow. Come to decisions quick, using it. No issue, like like that gentleman said, not making it about themselves. Just go in, thing, and I. Every time VAR is used in the Premier League, it's a drama. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to take ages. You know, what I mean, nobody really knows what's happening. You just see the referees there, guy. Like, I, I don't think we use it very well at all. And the in worst the part League. is, the worst part is, they still make the wrong decision. Well, that's it. If, if you that's take that's the worst part. If you take fifteen minutes and you make the right decision, fair. Fair enough, but they it's make like all the time is to get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, also been on the back of some poor VAR decisions. The one I really um, always think about was the Newcastle game. Yeah, where you know with with the push on um, Gabriel, Gabriel. I mean, how can VAR look at that and say that that is not a push? You know, I, I just it's yeah, not- I, 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 I. But what they do there, they just. I feel that the referees, they're all friends, which they are. They all he know each other. He was just making that point. No, right no, no, no. It's like interesting what you were saying because of. <laughs> who, who just made that point, sorry? <laughs> he, he just made yeah. that point. No, no, no. Listen, 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 right. I, I, I went to St. George's Park before. That's in England where they have, that's where England train. And that's what, they also yeah, do lots yeah. of seminars there yeah. for all the referees and that. And I remember I was there one day, right, for, for watching England training session. And all the referees were upstairs. All the Premier League referees were upstairs in a room doing a sort of seminar. And you see, they're all friends. They all know each other. They're... Drinking beer. And yeah, stuff. yeah. So if you're <laughs> if you've got a decision to make, so you, you say say for instance, you you're the VAR referee. Yeah. Sorry, I'm the VAR referee. Yes. You're the referee on the pitch. You've just made a really poor decision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself straight away. Like, hey, you know what? Good exposure. That's my, that's, that's my fr- that's my friend there, man. Oh, boy, you know what? Let's let's say it wasn't clear and obvious. I'll stick with it. You know what I mean? To help you out. And even um, there was one of the referees who retired the other day, Mike Dean, who actually admitted that. Yeah. He said yeah. that there was a he said there was an on-field decision, and he said the way the crowd was and that he didn't want to put his friend yeah. oh, through God. that. Is what he said. So I I just think the standard of what. I, I, I've always said the person who's in that VAR thing should just be nothing to do with referees. So, so it should just be an expert on analysing football who just comes to a cold decision based off the facts. And the law. And not, yeah. yeah, but these so referees... I don't putting the profession and the law on the line for his friendship. That's basically yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. There's that, there's that <laughs> you know, there's that, there's that, it's mentioned that they are all friends. You don't want your friend to look bad and all that. At the Afghan though, or the, at the Asian camp, Reference from different parts of them. Exactly. The so, so it's, yeah. just, it's just about the job. You want to you just want to look at the rule book. The rule book says that incident should be a red card. That should be a pen. That should be a foul. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be that. And, and that's say, probably and why. Like, that's probably why you get you, you. We're getting better decisions in that way because yeah. a person is looking at it and saying, "No, they've got that wrong." Yeah. It's just, Whereas, as I said, in other cases, it might be like, "Well." He's got that wrong with my friend, man. Yeah. And I remember, and I remember, I remember so, no, when, when, Morocco, I when Morocco played, when Morocco played in the game that Morocco against South Africa, yeah. Amrabat was the last man who's going into a tackle, pushes his man, referee gives him, he was already in a yellow card, yeah. referee gives him a second yellow and sends him off. Then VAR communicates to the ref and referee says, Amrabat, hang on, hang on, I've got something to check. Ref goes to VAR and I'm sitting at home, I'm thinking, oh, maybe that's not a red. But referee goes to VAR 
communicates with the VAR, sees the screen, comes back and tells Amrabat, sorry, it's not a second yellow card. It's, it's actually a straight, a straight red, red card. card. And that was unthinkable. You don't see it anywhere. Yeah, you, mm. it's, it, because he had already been sent off. Yeah, and he was the last man. But you see, there's a difference in the punishment. Yes. Double yellow or straight red card. So he got back from VAR and said, I'm sorry, it's not a second yellow. It's a straight red. I'm like, it, I've not seen that anywhere. And that is mm. proper. In that's a scenario a friend in the VAR booth will easily overlook. Oh, it's already it's a red card. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> it's already <laughs> out, so it should go. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I think they've they've used it really well. I mean, we've had cases in the Premier League where um, VAR have forgot to check things. That's happened with Arsenal yeah, as well, yeah. where they checked one decision and they said, all right, that's clear, but forgot to check the check other, other things as well. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. No, I, 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 I totally agree with what that guy said. They've yeah. been using the VAR way better in AFCON ah. um, and we in the Premier League can definitely take some, some, some serious lessons <laughs> from what, what I've seen. Yeah, you know, qualify the lessons to be serious uh, ones. Yeah. No, uh, serious because it's, you know, it costs, it can cost you games. It's, you know what I mean? I've seen, I've seen it yeah. and the title. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of the title, uh, Robbie, Arsenal are in a good position. You've you somehow found your way. Listen, over here, we have an Arsenal fan uh, in, in this team. He's currently in our vision. I think Gary is on. Is, is, is Gary still on? Gary, are you still on? Ah, okay. I can't hear mm. Gary. Uh, but we have an Arsenal fan. He's, he's over. We make fun of him all the time because every time we see Arsenal on top of the, the, the table, we there's always like this meme that comes mm. out. It's like it's an elephant hanging on a tree branch. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> I'll see that. <laughs> it's definitely going to come down at some point. Um, but somehow, uh, it keeps happening. This season might be that season. Last uh, last season was supposed to be it. Didn't happen. This season again. What's the feeling like now among the fans? Is this going to happen? Who knows? I mean, listen, I, I think it's still too early to say. You know, um, we had a great win last week over Liverpool. Dominated, dominated Liverpool from start to finish in that game. Um, we've played well on the whole this season, but we're still traumatised by those couple of results around Christmas where we lost to Fulham, we lost to West Ham. They're real shocks. Um, but I think that Arsenal are in and around it, you know, and maybe it suits us to be in and around it rather than to be top. A little bit of the pressure's off of us yeah. and we can kind of just stay there, stay in and around it and try to be at the end, see if we can, you know, get past two you know, huge juggernauts in, you know, and teams that are experienced in the Premier League of winning it in recent times in Liverpool and Man City. So um, it's going to be tough because especially in the case of Man City, they've got quite a few easy games coming up. They've got all their big boys back in Haaland and De Bruyne. You know, it could come down to Arsenal need to go there and win. Wow. Um, but this Arsenal team is showing a lot this season. I'm telling you, like, I remember before the Liverpool game, I, I was out the night before that game. There was this big boxing show in London and I saw a load of Liverpool fans and they were so confident. They were telling me 4-0, 3-0. To be fair, it was also after they beat Chelsea, right? they just beaten Chelsea. Yeah. But, but like I said to this Liverpool fan, we're not Chelsea. <laughs> 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 we're not Chelsea, right? So Chelsea's better. The okay, Liverpool right, fans right. were going 3-0, 4 I got you, hold on a minute. When we played you at Anfield, what was the score? Right. Oh, it was 1-1. One, one. So I go, if we came to your place, it's 1-1. One, one. I said, we played in the FA Cup. You beat us 2-0. It's universally no, admitted by everybody that yeah. you got fortunate that day because Arsenal missed so many chances. Yeah. In that, I remember the game started. We had a big chance right at the start That's of the game. Reese Nelson, yeah. Nelson should have just chipped the keeper. Or he, he should have done. It was easier to score than what missed... I said to him, you got fortunate that day, but well done, you won it. But to say, and you could still win, beat us because you're a great side, but to say you're going to come to the Emirates. And win 4-0. And win 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> I go, that's I go, that's I go, that's, that's, I go you be confident there. You're yeah. being very arrogant, right? And then they came on the day, and I'm telling you, 3-1 flattered Liverpool. We should have beaten them by more. I Sack out there, straightforward there. So... And we beat a Man City this season as well. People forget. We beat Man City twice this season. We beat them in the Community Shield. We beat them at the Emirates. So this is a good Arsenal side. It's, but I think we're very reliant upon key players have to be fit. You know, like for instance, if we could get Thomas Partey back 
have a good run with him before the end of the season. Him, Declan Rice in what that midfield. What injury worry? What was his latest? I think what he had a setback? setback setback to the injury that he had. Right. So, so I, I have a question. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Thomas Partey because I have a question there. Because at the start of this season, I couldn't believe that there was actually a consideration of Partey leaving. And there was a big, and there was a big, big group of Arsenal fans that really wanted him to leave. And you could see the conversation on Twitter. I remember when they went to the US without him, I broke that news that he was joining them and he wasn't going to go anywhere because I've had con I had had conversations with people in his camp. But the whole summer, I was very confused about why that was even on the table at all. What is <clears> it <throat> with Arsenal fans and what's their feeling with Partey? Let, let, let me say, right, like Arsenal fans love Thomas Partey. Okay. They absolutely love him. He was one of our best players last season, if not the best, right? Him, you probably say Saka, then he was probably next, right? He was brilliant last season. Mm -hmm. But those, what you would have seen there was out of frustration because he's always injured. So you start to get fans saying, well, what, what's the point? You know what I mean, we, we, if we got this player that we all know how good he is. He played in that, you know, when he came in against the City game. He came yeah, in, yeah. it was him who started that move that led to the goal that won, won yes. the game yeah then we haven't seen him since it's not his fault no player wants to be injured but fans get frustrated they start to think well we never see this guy we we may as well try and cash in and try and see if we can just get someone else in who can will, will be fit and will can play and that's where it comes from it doesn't come from um, Arsenal fans not liking Thomas Partey. They, they, when when the guy's um, fit, he's one of the best players in our team, without a doubt. If he was fit this season, him and Declan Rice in that midfield, ah. an order guard, I think on paper, we probably have the best midfield in the Premier League. But unfortunately, he's been injured so much. I mean, we barely seen him play a game he's this season. Three games this season. Three games this season. So you can understand... <laughs> I understand right where the frustration comes from. I feel very sorry for him because... If I was uh, him and I'm reading all this stuff, I'd be like, "Well, what do you do? You want? Do you think I want to be injured? That's a I want to be playing. I want to be fit. But you know, it's a frustration thing. Uh, please, I, I hope people in in Ghana don't feel that it's a thing where fans have turned on him personally because he, his performances is not. It, they're just frustrated because they're like, that makes we want to see him. Yeah. yeah, and if we can't see him, if he's never going to be fit, then we probably have to move on to the next person, and that's why people were saying that. You mentioned something about cashing in, and that brings me to a conversation we've had in the past, and uh, Sicho and I were just talking about it, Mikel Arteta, and whether or not he really is taking this team forward. Last season was really it's just The evidence is there. I have to, well, I have to, well, I have to stop well, you, have to stop you okay, straight away. Don't, he's taking well, okay, it forward. But here's the question, though. When you look at the amount of money he invested last season, at the end of last season, where that team was... Do you think that this has not, he's improved them this season? I mean, is, this, is this season's team better than last season's, despite all the money spent? How much Chelsea did, in, did Chelsea invest? The Chelsea, well, business, they? Chelsea, Chelsea business Chelsea Chelsea has been a bad business. So it's, let's, it's bad business. Let's, talk, let's focus is, on that Arsenal. Much, that much it's easy admitted. to say bad business now, but they, in, in, they invested um, a over a billion. There's yes. people at the start of the season, right? If you rewind back and you see these people saying, oh, I feel Chelsea could mount a challenge this season. But well, Robbie, to be I fair, I don't think anybody, anybody ever said Chelsea... Despite all the money, people I don't think said, anyone, people, anyone considered them. There was people saying that Man United would mount a challenge this season. They're nowhere to be seen. And then there were people saying, oh, Arsenal, if they don't win the league, like last season, I say, if they don't win the league this season, it's done. They've got no chance in the future. This is their best opportunity ever because Liverpool are going to come back. Chelsea are going to come back. United are going to come back. Well, I'm City, City are still there, there, right? To be fair, City and Liverpool are back. And who's challenging again? Arsenal. Arteta's doing a good job. We don't, we don't know yet if he's going to be um, the person, but all I do know is very difficult to get past Jurgen Klopp, very difficult to get past Pep Guardiola. These are legends of the game right now that you've got to get past as a manager. But I think he's building a very, very good team. Remember, as we just said, we, we, we're talking about one of his key players missing the whole season in Partey. He's also had guys like Julian Timber miss the whole season as well, who was another key signing. Yeah. Tommy Asu's been out. So I know a lot of teams have had injuries as well, but I, I personally think um, 
Mikel Arteta is doing a very good job. He's, he's, no, he's, no, got Arsenal, he's got Arsenal challenging for leagues. When, at some what, points, what, yeah, at some but points he, Mikel has to start winning titles for Arsenal. Of course. And of at what point, okay, I remember of when course, of course. Arsenal Wenger's final years, especially on AFTV, <laughs> Troops and, 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 you know, and, like, <laughs> and Kelechi, <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Kelechi was almost, we're not very kind to Arsenal. And that was a manager who had done so much. But at what point do you think Arsenal fans are going to be very patient or their, their patience is going to wane? When well, Mikel is not winning, uh, Mikel and, and are, are. Uh, Arsene Wenger has been talking twenty odd years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long time, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, um, they didn't turn on him until right near the end. You know, when even he has admitted himself since, I should have left earlier. I should have left earlier. He's yeah. admitted that, so I, I don't think you can look and blame fans for kind of then at the end wanted him to go. But listen, when you manage your Arsenal football club. Arsenal fans demand you win things. Mm. So that's a fact, right? So he will come under pressure. He's, he's already coming out. Even when we lost those two games at Christmas, you start to see some people saying, is this the guy? Is it, is, that's the pressure that comes with a big job. But I look on it overall, and I say he's doing a good... Nobody expected Arsenal to challenge last season. He nearly won the league. And as I said, everybody thought we'd just fall away this season. He's back challenging for it again. And... I personally think he deserves he deserves more time. Who else is near to, to Klopp and um, Guardiola? No one's near. I mean, if, if United, other, if, they, if, we're not the only team that spent a lot of money. Robbie, if, if, if United, you said he deserves more time, and I agree, every manager deserves some. And Mikel has done a great job. If United Emery had had the time that you are demanding for No, Mikel, no, no. The Unai Emery, listen. What again, about United didn't work at Arsenal? The wise after the fact thing, right? Unai Emery, right? Because I, I was at every game. Mm. You and I, Emery. Let's rem- go, let's, because I've had this uh, discussion with a lot of, right. with a lot of people. Go Una Emery, that season, before he got sat, he should have got top four. He didn't. He missed out. Top four, he should have got easy. He missed out on that. We then went to the final of the Europa, Europa League. League played yeah. Chelsea. I was there, all the way in back, who got humiliated. You took four. 4-1. He was happy. Yeah? Right? <laughs> is he Chelsea? Yeah, he's a Chelsea fan. <laughs> he's a Chelsea fan. <laughs> <laughs> and he's telling me about money. <laughs> he's a Chelsea fan. Nah, and he's telling me about money. I have been with Robbie for the past three days. I, I have not told him I'm a Chelsea fan. No, but you know what? To be yeah, fair no. to you, I yeah. wouldn't tell no one I'm a Chelsea fan either if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> you but, just ruined that and now I will not hear the end of it <laughs> but right Unai, so Unai Emery he did that yeah and they still didn't sack him they said no nah, we have to give him another try and then we started the next season and we went on a horrendous run we were losing game after game he had to leave he, he, you know what I mean maybe he's more suited to Aston Villa and also we don't know how it's going to turn out this season yeah yeah because he started to have a few really dodgy results of- yeah look at the other night yeah. so um so it was right for us to get rid of Unai Emery at the time. I'm not saying he's a bad manager, but I it think... Just wasn't, it just wasn't, wasn't working. working. It just wasn't yeah, working. Yeah, wrong, wrong, wrong manager for, for Arsenal. All right, fair enough. But Robbie, yeah. No, you were going to say something? I was just saying, but I feel Arteta, he deserves more time. He's doing a good job. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's talk about why you are here. Um, mm-hmm. On Sunday, something special is happening. Uh, you and uh, Joseph... Where is Joseph uh, of uh, AGSM? Um, by the way, how did you two meet? First of all, what are you doing here in Ghana? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here in Ghana for the, I'm here for the watch party, um, yeah. to watch the the game with um, you know Arsenal Ghanaian fans. So what we what we've been trying to do on AFTV is we've been trying to like um, go around the world and engage more and more with fans. So, and for me personally, in particular, Africa. So we did do. One of these watch parties about nearly a year and a half, just over a year and a half ago, we did one in Nigeria. Somebody sent a message about that. Yes. Yeah, we did one in Nigeria. It was brilliant. Um, so we were looking at where else to go in Africa. And then I was over at a, a conference, um, a football conference in Miami. And I met Joseph. Was it Soccer X? Soccer X, ah. yeah. It was a Soccer X conference. And I walked... The first person I met when I walked through the door was Joseph. <laughs> and he started ch- talking to me about Ghana. I think he mentioned something about Ghana Joloff as well. Uh, and all that. He definitely did. He definitely did. So Joloff right. convinced you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then, and then Uncle he, he said to me, he goes, he goes, listen, you've got to come to Ghana, Thomas Party Connection, the amount of fans. And I was like, yo, you know what? Yeah, you're right. We meet so many Ghanaian Arsenal fans. And he's like, yeah, we've got to make this happen and that. And i got to really give them a lot of credit. Like, they've made it happen. You know what I mean? That, that was like literally November. That was about three months ago. Yeah. And, you know, we stayed in contact. And, you know, he's a very relentless guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's made it happen. And, and, and it's been great to be here. It's been wonderful so far. All right. So this is happening at the... Where's Joseph? Joseph. This is a, tell us about where it's happening and what it's going to be like So for all the people that want to come on Sunday. Um, so the biggest watch party <clears throat> is going to happen at um, uh, Legon City Mall, opposite the University of Legon. Yeah, at, at 12. University of Ghana, Legon, yeah. Yeah, yeah starts at 12. Uh, and it's a three-game uh, event. So basically, it's literally the whole day. Uh, Arsenal, West Ham, um, Aston Villa, Manchester United, and um, the AFCON final. Interesting. And this is not just can't watch football, is it? No, 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 no. So this is going to be a fun pack day. Um, there's going to be like PlayStation games in terms of like FIFA competitions. There's going to be a lot of activities on there mm. for people to just come have fun. Food bazaar and everything. Yeah. Uh, and there's a like, like a whole VIP. I've seen some of the, the setup and all that. So uh, some of the and listen, Robbie. I don't know if you've met some of them, but some of the biggest people in Ghana are Arsenal fans. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've I've noticed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've noticed. You know. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I, that's why. President, I, president of the land is your rival fan. I yeah. heard that. <laughs> yeah, the president is a Spurs fan. Yeah, I heard that. I heard yeah. that. And but his cousin, I'm, his cousin is an Arsenal fan. I like his cousin. But <laughs> 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 well, listen, I'm. I'm oh, 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 you know, oh, is listen. It his nephew. Uh, his nephew. I think. Okay, but well, I'm not going to go against the president. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know where I am. <laughs> right. So I know my place where I am. Right. Yeah. So. But maybe we could persuade him to yeah. become an Arsenal fan. You know maybe, what I mean? So maybe. maybe I, you know what I mean? Maybe if I, he we, shows up for the watch party, yeah, we need to bring him there and try and persuade him and say to him, "Listen, <laughs> Arsenal, be a, you're doing a, everything all right, but be an Arsenal fan and it'd be perfect." But no, I, I've just been blown away at the amount of Arsenal fans that are here in this country. Arsenal, I mean, it's yeah. incredible. I mean, as I said, I meet we meet them all the time in London, but to be here. And just to and, and that's what we're trying to show in all the videos we're doing as well. Yeah. We're trying to show the passion of the fans. We're trying to show the culture of the country, and I, and I'm hoping that we're doing that. And and I mean the welcome we had at the airport and that I'm still. Yeah, it's amazing. I saw, you I saw your dance moves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the dancers were doing that. I don't yeah. know if I was doing yeah. that. Uh, yeah. But um, no, nah, no, nah, and it's just been, I don't know. Amazing, it's just I felt powerful being here, man. Yeah. It's just you know. You just feel the power of Africa, you know. So yeah. it's been it's been wonderful being there and just connecting. Yeah, you know, even doing things like this, just connecting with with with, with football fans. Absolutely. You know, it's it's fantastic. All right, Robbie, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. We'll be looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. All of you who are listening to us as well. Who are be you there. coming? I am coming for sure. Yeah. You sure, the Chelsea ain't yeah, playing. Yeah, I'm coming for the Afcon final. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, Mohamed Kudus will score against West Ham. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, who does he support? Okay. <laughs> I'm a Kotako fan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Kotako. Uh, so we Kotoko, all be there. Yes. Asante Kotoko. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, one of the club. biggest clubs in the continent. Right. Okay. Yeah. Muftar, okay. Thank you. Thank right, you well. very much. Thank you, Rabi. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Sicho. Thank you, Muftar. Thank you. Gary and Daniel joining us from my vision and thank you at your as well. My name is Fento. Tahiri Fento show sponsored by Petroso on DSTV. We're back again next Friday. Until then, see you.